views and opinions expressed by callers, guests, and hosts do not necessarily reflect those of the Black Talk Radio Network and Black Talk Media Project. Black Talk Radio is new black media for the new millennium. Dinar would have had serious consequences for the world financial system, but may also have empowered the people of Africa, something black activists say the U.S. wants to avoid at all costs. We're slicing cake. We're slicing cake. We're slicing cake. Say the US wants to avoid at all costs. We're slicing cake. Say the US wants to avoid at all costs. We're slicing cake. Gaddafi didn't give up. In the months leading up to the military intervention, he called on African and Muslim nations to join together to create this new currency that would rival the dollar and euro. They would sell oil and other resources around the world only for gold dinars. It's an idea that would shift the economic balance of the world. Countries' wealth would depend on how much gold they have, not how many dollars they trade. And Libya has 144 tons of gold. Welcome, 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 everyone to Tando Radio Show, brought to you by Black Talk Radio Network. I'm your, well, I won't be your host today. Today is a Wise Wednesday. It's November the 1st, 2017. It's the 11th month of the year. Man, this year is already going, going, gone. How about that, y'all? So it's a Wise Wednesday, and we have a, a live show, show for you today. Very, you know, this this show, I'm really looking forward to hearing from, from uh, Brother Davis. And he's here, ready to go. So uh, we will get to that in just a moment. Everyone, please continue to support Black Talk Radio Network by going to the website for the network, and that's www.blacktalkradionetwork.com. And you'll see on the home page, please hit the uh, donation and give some of your financial energy to support this uh, network, as well as you can support the network by going to or you know, being a member of its social media outlet known as BTR Community. You can also find that on the homepage for the network, or you can go to www.btrcommunity.com, www.btrcommunity.com, and it is a social media platform where you can engage in all of your social media activities without being adversely affected and as as adversely affected as the uh, mainstream media ones. And you can post stuff about yourself, your business, things in the community that you think are necessary. And just to have a dialogue and a place where you can come together with other like-minded individuals that the, that the network was actually put together to service. So by doing that, you will also, that membership supports uh, the overall platform uh, for BTR community, and it supports the network as well. So for only $24 a, uh, a year, you can be a member to BTR community. That is, I mean, can't beat that for what it is and what it does. So please be a part of that. Also, if you would like to acquire real money, you can go to Prosperity Mint. That's uh, prosperitymint.com. Check out what's in inventory there. Then you can definitely email info at prosperitymint.com. Also, if you would like to be a part of our crowdfunding campaign, uh, definitely text me, 951-790-8330. And please text me uh, uh, your name, um, number, where uh, then I will be able to, to reach you. Changing some things, um, uh, some I'm going to do some things different. I'm probably going to be, because the platform, especially for people that aren't familiar with cryptocurrencies, this crowdfunding camp, uh, campaign is kind of uh, a little difficult because there's a lot of different things that you got to learn in setting up your wallet and everything else. And it was so funny. Um, I was uh, helping someone, and I asked them, uh, for those of you that are in um, the cryptocurrency space, you'll you'll get a quick laugh out of this. I was asking someone, um, okay, uh, sir, so what is your uh, address? Um, and I was speaking about their Bitcoin address. I said, okay, so I explained. I said, well, we're going to put your 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 uh, your wallet uh, website here, and then uh, we're going to put your uh, your Bitcoin address 
this here. And, and, the, and the gentleman, real, real, real nice, said, okay, no problem. I said, okay, so what is your address? And he said, 1127 Pleasant Run. I bust out laughing. For those of you that know what I mean by that are in the crypto space, it was just hilarious. So there's a lot of different things that we need to get our – uh, get the general population educated to, uh, and that's, you know, we might as well learn now because we're going to have to learn this, uh, the way things are going, and the, there's a, an advantage to it now. Get in early, and you will be able to uh, position yourself in a great, great way. So we've got a great crowdfunding campaign uh, that's going on, uh, but get with me, and I will have a show uh, probably later on. I want some of I need to uh, get the people that we already have squared away before we really start bringing in um, many more people. Um, so I will, I, we will be doing that. So looking forward to that as well. Okay. So um, before we get into uh, the show, I'm not able to see the board. I'm not able. I'm not online right now because um, I'm not at a place where I can do that uh, as of right now. But. What I wanted, I, I do want to say is uh, a couple of people uh, hit me up all day about this EMP thing, and I, I kind of, kind of laughed, and and so it was people that I was only laughing at the people that usually don't, you know, talk to me about that. I got a couple of, I mean, I was surprised, and they were coming like repetitively. You know, they kept calling me back, and a bunch of people were were calling uh, that don't talk about preparing and everything else, and they said. We're, we're, what's this um, MPD, e, e, M, EMD, e, EPMD uh, thing that's going to cut all the lights out, David? I, I, you know, I just couldn't help but laugh. Uh, EPMD thing is going to cut all the lights out. I said, what are you talking about? I knew what they were talking about. So they, they went on to say, they, the government said they're going to cut their lights out on everybody. And I kind of kind of chuckled and laughed. And then I said, yeah, that's the training, the so-called training that they do. There's a couple of different trainings that they do called Grid X and everything else. And then the Mars, and that's with the ham, with the ham radio operators. They're going to do a, a, a drill where saying that the lights went out in, in the country um, and how with the ham radio operators deal with it. Because in the future, I think that that will be a possibility, and that's a, a real trump card to play. Hint, hint, trump card. Got it? Okay. That's a that's a good trump card to play in the future. And so I don't think that uh, – and it is uh, coinciding with some protests uh, that's going to be going on uh, strategically in strategic places as being reported by the uh, mainstream media and some others. But I don't think that this, uh, this so-called EMP uh, – Exercise is something that you, you definitely need to to know uh, about it and and be prepared for it. But I don't think that this is going to be one that has any weight, and hope, hopefully it doesn't. Because one thing, if it is, nobody here is really prepared for for that. Hey Dave, um, I got some, how long you've been preparing? Yeah, go ahead, Scott. I got some information for you. Um, yeah, the Department of Defense, because people sent me that video. Even my own sister sent me the video, and I was, like, surprised yeah, that she sent Scotty, me the video. Wait, 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 Scotty, you too? I mean, it was people that you never would hear of was sending right. this. I'm like, where are y'all getting this from? Go right. ahead, Scotty. Yeah, my baby sister never talk about stuff like that, man, and she sent me the video yeah. through Facebook. So I did a little research on it, and other people was doing some research. I saw the video. Um, if it was true, they gave very bad preparation <laughs> advice. They basically just told people to go buy yeah. canned food. I was like, what about the Faraday yeah. cages and the Faraday shield for right. the vehicle and, and all that good stuff? Right. You know, you just telling people to buy canned food. <laughs> I thought that was funny. Yeah. But anyway, the, the they said in the video the Department of Defense put out a press release. So I went to the website. I tried to look it up and all of that, and I couldn't find anything. I did find some interesting stuff, but I'm not going to you know, go off into that. Um, mm -hmm. a, a meeting that mm -hmm. um, Mattis had with Mad Dog Duarte over there in the Philippines. I did find that, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but I couldn't find nothing mm -hmm. else related to a drill, right? So what? So Max shared a Snopes article with me, and what it was, the Department of Defense made a Twitter post. They didn't do a press release. They made a Twitter post saying that they were going to have a communications drill, 
All right, and and right. and I saw right with the Mars, right. I saw other like the ham operators, radio, you know, amateur radio operators. Mm-hmm. They will be a part of that, man, because they're part of what you might call right. the sil- What do they call it? The civil civil service defense. Or something like that. Yep, civil defense. Yes, yeah, exactly. Yes, exactly. So they they are just going to simulate like all the communications is out, and so you know then we're going to have to operate by ham radio shortwave, and so, so that's what that's about. Mm-hmm. Now that Antifa stuff, right wingers been putting that out for a long time, and I don't know right. that it's true or not. But let me, but this is my take on that. If I was in the org, if I was if I had leadership in an organization like that and I plan to start a civil war or start national riots on a particular night, I wouldn't be putting that information out on Facebook. No. I don't no. know, Dave, if you've ever been deployed, um, you know, when you were in the service, but when they deployed me mm-hmm. to, to the Gulf War, we didn't know about it until they called us uh, in to work on a Saturday and nobody can leave. You can't go home. You can't call your wife. You can't call nobody. 12 hours before. Exactly, Scotty. Yes. So it don't make, again, I don't know, you know, who these people are in, in, because it's pretty much like an underground type organization. I did an interview with a with a black Antifa member and what have you. So I don't know how credible that is. Uh, mostly right wingers been hyping that up. Now, I wouldn't be surprised since right. you've been hyped up so much that you have people go out to the center of town or the town squares, like they say, being looky loos or looking for some trouble mm-hmm. simply because. So right. it could have it could have the effect of starting some mess just because it was widely circulated. It could have been totally a, a false uh, a hoax, but because if so many people yeah. believe it. Some people will go, you know, Dave, some people be going out there to look for trouble. Yep. And I just hope ain't none of our people uh, are right. going to be going out there if it's true or not true. Yeah. So that, no, I that's what I yeah, that's what That's exactly what Scotty laid out is exactly um, what, what I've known for about two weeks now. Uh, what, what Scotty talked about, the ham, the, the ham radios, it's a drill. They're doing it through Mars. Um, hand, uh, the, the radio, handheld radio uh, operators, the ham radios, because all of those have to register. If they're going to be transmitting, they need a license to, to transmit. And so, but what is this saying? They're preparing for, for things because, you, you know, in the future, it may actually come into place. So, and then this with the Antifa, um, I don't need to even repeat this anymore. What Scotty said is exactly, a- absolutely uh, my opinion um, in, on that whole thing. Is that and when and Scotty talked about being deployed? Yes, I was deployed, and what uh, Scotty said was absolutely right. I actually didn't go through the deployment. They, um, um, I actually was uh, held back to get everybody else, and it just was at the last minute. They were like, "No, you're not going. You're going to stay here and get everybody and, and get all of our uh, uh, equipment and vehicles ready to, uh, for further deployment." But what Scotty talked about in the military, they don't tell you it's, it's a last minute thing. And it's an absolutely, uh, absolute last minute thing. So, yeah, I don't. Um, it's not going to be broadcast that way. But what what this is signaling that is 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 really important that you get ready for that to happen at some point by whatever fashion, but whatever reason in the future, so that you will be um, in a better position. And then one person called me and said it was so funny. They said, "Hey, they're going to cut the lights out on in a couple of days. What 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 should we do?" I told them, I said, if they're going to cut the lights out in a couple of days and you ain't been preparing for the past couple of years for it, you can forget about it. Ain't much that you can do. Um, so, but, you know, as Scotty hey, said, Dave. yeah, you need a Faraday cage and, and things of that nature. So, yeah, go ahead, Brother Davis. Hey, Brother David, those who connected with RDP have insight on this anyway. We discussed this in detail earlier in, uh, when we first started. So this shouldn't That's be right. a shock to them at all. I just wanted to add that. Yeah, and you know, uh, Brother Davis is abs- absolutely right. Those that are in uh, uh, RDP, with, this was, you know, and we said that this is the time 
of the uh, from when we started in 2014, 2015, that around this time things are going to be really, really picking up. You need to really prepare. It, it takes a long time to get prepared because we're all working off of limited resources, um, or, and and so it takes a while. So if if they do cut out the lights, which I don't see that happening um, in this train, because then they lose all of the momentum of of having. And I'll say it this way. There's a lot of training exercises that sometimes go live, but what they won't do is they won't say that we're going to cut the lights out and then they actually do it because then they lose all leverage because there will be a lot of people, even though a lot of people would not make it if the, if the, if we went to a, uh, if an EMP hit and it was a massive uh, uh, attack on the grid, which is extremely fragile and it would run rampant through this, this country. Uh, a lot of people wouldn't make it, but, they would, they're not going to, they're going, the, the system always does this, in my opinion. They say that the reason why it happened, and they give you the reason why it happened, so that you'll have to look to them for the solution from the problem that they created. Doubt that they're going to say they're going to cut the lights out, cut it out, and then you people run to them for the solution when they know that they were the ones that cut the lights out. So, um, so I don't think it's something, but you do need to prepare. I think that will be in play in the future, but could it go out? Sure it could, definitely could. And that's why you should never be scared, always prepared. So uh, just wanted to say that I can't see the board, so we're not going to do uh, what's in the news, and I'm not sure uh, if, if uh, Rise is here. So we're going to get to uh, right to Brother Davis. And um, if you have a question or comment for Brother Davis today, uh, definitely give him a call, 866-510-9025, 866 866- Five one zero ninety twenty five. I will not be on the board, so just uh, uh, politely say excuse me to Brother Davis, and then make your question or comment known. So, Brother Davis, without further ado, looking forward to the show. Thank you, thank you so much for who you are, and uh, you and Sister Davis mean so much to us personally and to us collectively uh, in our overall in our overall development. So, Wise Wednesday, brothers and sisters. Here we go. Go ahead, Brother Davis. Thank you, my brother David. Well, I'm very humble about that, and I tell you, this is an act of love. And uh, when I say an act of love, I mean I can tell you anything. So if I get out here and give it to you and demonstrate it to you and let you operate in it, how much greater love can I show you? That's like the old fishing concept. I can give you a fish, but it would appreciate me more if I taught you how than you could get your own. Welcome, my brothers and sisters, to a wise Wednesday, and this is going to be off the hook tonight. Because over the next few weeks, I'm going to break down the universal laws. Why? Because the universal laws entrap a knowledge that we are, have access to, but we have to teach ourselves to learn to access it. Let me repeat that. We have to teach ourselves to learn how to access it. See, there's a lot of stuff that we don't understand, so let me start out with the basic law. Everything is connected to everything else. What we think, say, do, and believe will have a corresponding effect on others and the world around us. Everything that exists, seen and unseen, are connected to each other, inseparable from the other. To find the divine oneness, divine all-knowing, the matrix, pure consciousness, or universal mind energy, sometimes known as life force. Everything is one. Now, I know a lot of you are saying, well, that's just a phrase, but it's not. And that's why I'm going to start with something tonight that you can identify with. Remember my phrase, start where you stand. Okay, the reason why I stay at is because we can operate from us. Okay? So, let's start with something basic. Man's thinking, emotions, it's physical activities, it's physiological processes, and the reception of the spiritual powers, in other words, all aspects of his or her life are carried out by a light force or energy within his being. Okay, now you heard it mentioned energy many, many times. But you didn't hear Dave talk about how the energy was connected in you, so I'm going to give you that focus tonight. Now, a lot of what I'm going to to give you tonight 
Westernism does not want you to know. And I'm going to tell you why they want you to know. Because when someone gives you a key to knowledge, and you use that key to open that door, and you step through that door, all of the windows in that door are available to you. Now, why do I say that? Because I cannot, or do, nor would I want to, have control over your decisions, but you may come from a bloodline that is activated as soon as you walk in that door that may give you the ability of telekinesis, levitation, dimensional travel. I don't know. But I do know these are all common teachings of Egypt. That's why there were so many things able to be accomplished that cannot be accounted for today. So, in giving you that, I want you to understand that everything starts with you. From the moment you were born, you lost something. Now, I understand how I said that. From the moment you were born, you lost something. You see, when you are in, uh, when your mother's pregnant, you are in what's called a package of peace. All you had to do was develop over a period of time all the nutrients that you needed came to you. All of the water that you needed came to you. Everything came to you. You see, the universe didn't overlook any aspect of the purpose of your soul. But yet we do from the moment we're born. Now, I know that's going to throw some of you off, so let me be very clear about this. Do you realize that when you are in the womb, you are breathing, you are a life force? A soul at one point was implanted into you for a greater purpose than just you being born. You just had to evolve to that. Well, that knowledge of after birth was taken away from us. Okay, when I say it was taken away from us, we conformed because we were born in a time of emulation. We conformed to the emulation. You see, the emulation was taking us away from who we truly were to be, to what we are. Let me repeat that again. It took us away from who we truly were to be, to what we are. Okay? Now, when you're born, you're born breathing on a level which is called embryonic. Now, some of you who've heard my shows before heard me speak about embryonic breathing. Embryonic breathing is when an embryo is born, they breathe, they inhale and exhale to exhaustion. You've heard babies cry to the point where you can't hear a sound, and then once they got their air back, the sound comes back. See, they breathe in air to their lungs are full and they breathe out air to their exhausted now maybe I shouldn't say to their exhausted let me say until they can regress the rhythm of breathing again because they don't know what it is this is being in it. they've inherited this okay so in inheriting this they don't realize that when they're crying and they're breathing out air that they're not making the sound. I'm quite sure you've all seen a child crying so, so hard that they don't realize they're not making the sound. And then when they get their air back again, they hear the sound return. But you see, that is that aspect of hormonal connection to sound and breath. Why? Because everything is energy. Now, we say everything is energy without explanation. I'm going to give you explanation here. You see, all energy is an inherent birthright. How you use your energy is entirely different. So we are taught from a baby a specific design. What is that? The design we emulated, our, our, our examples emulated. But that really wasn't truly the path that we were to follow. Why wasn't the path we were to follow? Because it didn't help us develop us humans, how we fit the whole of understanding 
Okay? We couldn't say, why do we breathe like that? So we couldn't ask that question to anybody. But yet our ancestors and a part of the growth process would lay their hands on our chest. And as a child, when we breathed so hard, when we were crying, that we would not make a sound, they would touch us. And that physical touch allowed the body to regain understanding of in and out. Now, did it know that it was inhaling and exhaling? No, it didn't. But these were the communication tools that were used at that time for us to move our culture forward. See, and there's a lot of research I've been putting into the show. I want you to very seriously listen and take notes because you're going to see how these things developed in your life that you did not know. Okay, no energy can move by itself. It requires a thought. Why? Because energy is like water. It moves. But you could literally design a path for water to flow in. If you do not, it will flood. So therefore, we were not taught how to be able to harness the control of our energy through our mind thought process. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. This is going to get deep. A lot of times in science, we understand the meanings of knowing the law that governs the immutable relationship between cause and effect. But we don't really know how it operates. And the reason why we don't know how that operates is because nothing was ever explained to us. But can you imagine as a child, walking in to what would have been the kitchen and saying, you know, I was running and I was running and I, I just, my breath was just being taken away. And your mother looked at you and said, your breath was being taken away because you were not guiding your energy. And you said, well, what do you mean guiding my energy? Well, you ever notice long distance runners how they could run so long, and yet their body is maintaining its consistency to supply all its needs. And the child looks and says, yeah, I've seen that. Well, what his thought process was doing was guiding his energy to the areas that are needed. So therefore, all of the oxygen that he needed to be able to sustain running long distances was available to him. And uh, for a minute, think about that. How I many of you have seen marathons and you say, well, I don't know how they do that. But you possess the same power. It's just that it was never open to you. You see, during that cultural process, the things that were open to you were open to indoctrinate and control, never to allow you to be free. If you were free, you would be thinking independent, and they don't want that. So this is why it's so important that we work from the purpose of ourselves, an individual purpose, to grow to learn the importance. Okay? To understand the condition of energy and how it operates, your mind and your body must be in tune to what you're trying to do. The life force that is in your body is only an attribute. It cannot control your mind. Westernism determines that this is not important. Why? Because they don't know the limit of it. Gabby, I, you ever look at a gorilla and you see the size and the massive muscle power in this thing? And then you realize all it needs is green leaves. I mean, think of that dynamic for a minute. This massive animal is a vegetarian. So it doesn't really require anything out of order or balance in order to achieve it. Now imagine being able to evolve and have that power on a mental level or a spiritual level. Now some have it on a physical level already. So I'm going to open your door to how, you, how, that, how that works, to 
understanding of that which we don't really understand. Okay, the fundamental law of life and the universe science will one day learn that this is that thought governs energy. Let me repeat that. Thought governs energy. So now let's take a minute and really focus on that. We have the energy in our body that gives us power. Uh, and we know thought governs energy. But we don't know how to utilize that thought to be able to tap into that energy for a level of control. You see, this is why Westernism will never teach you these things. Because you think, look at the, the dynamic itself. If thought governs energy, and you have the ability to think that you must have some control over that energy. And when you develop that control, just think of what you can do with it. Energy throws through various meridians and at different rates of vibration. And these correlate with specific colors or harmonic intervals. And these harmonic in intervals are like the pentatonic scale. Now, those of you who are into music understand what the pentatonic scale is. An element of that force that practice entails working with the same colors to heal yourself. Now think about that for a minute. That means that I can develop my thought process to take control of the energy in my body and direct it wherever I want to. Why? Because it already speaks about the meridians in the body. Now for those of you who realize, don't know, meridians are large canals and arteries are small canals. Every major organ in your body requires a large canal to bring you the essence, the nutrients, the oxygen that that organ needs to function. Now, once again, you have the ability to control the energy. So, what if you could develop yourself, what you can, to the point where you can literally control the energy to send it to the parts of your body where it is weak, which you have. It's just that you don't know how to operate in it, and one of the reasons why you don't is because Western system is afraid of that. How far could you go? What all could you do? Would it hurt us? That may not even be your attention, but that's how they think. So they want to take these things away from you so that you don't operate in them because guess what? They don't want you to understand the very things they're taking away from you are a part of the most important aspect of what you're trying to do. Now, I know you're saying, what do you mean you're trying to take away from me? Well, have you noticed your water supply lately? Have you noticed the contamination of it? Have you noticed the buying of it? And have you noticed the treating the buying water? Yeah, they're treating you with something. All of these play an important role when you look at the aspect of the universe. Why? Because water is the elixir of life. Every living thing requires water. And in your body, it even has a, a greater importance. Because, as I said before, energy flows in your body like water. So you must direct it or you will get backups. And backups cause an unbalance. And then unbalances over a period of time opens the door for disease. So really, once again, as I always said, we are magnificent in the construction. It was pure perfect harmony. Do you realize that water magnifies sound? Are you seeing the role vibration plays in there? You see, I have to take you on a level 
in which you can experiment on yourself. And I'm going to give you some experiments because I have to open that door for you to be able to step in and say, hmm, I understand. You see, just that what I spoke to you about embryonic breathing, to breathe in as deep and as long as you can and then exhale deep and get it all out. Now, when you practice this on a regular basis, you're going to find that you can control that time. How long it takes the air to fill your lungs and how long it takes the air to leave your lungs. And that's the perfect way to the first lesson. You see, the oxygen that you take into your body when you breathe in, allows your system to go into your lungs and take the otic oxygen out and particles pack it into cells and take it to all aspects of your body. So when you're breathing in the fresh air, you're fortifying your new, your body's actual natural element of operation. And you're bringing fresh oxygen into the system so the system can distribute it. Now, here's what's so unique about it. When you first do it, you won't think about timing. But then over a period of time, start slowing it down. Now, why do I say that? Because you bring more oxygen in, the body operation requires less energy. And the longer it takes you to get your lungs filled, Hey, Brother Davis. Slower. Yes, brother. Um, you got a call in queue, but I want to say that you're speaking real low, and they're not able to hear you. Okay, well, I'm, I'm, let me tell you, I'm to fine tune this, because I don't want nobody to miss nothing. All right, but hold you got on. a call from 609 but Yeah, well, hold on. Before I take that caller in queue, I want to put this last thing out there. That exhale brings more properties of energy into your system. Why? Because that exhale literally is allowing more energy to stay in longer. That's why the slower you do it, the better you become at it. And the better you become at it, the more blessing to the body that you will be. And that will open doors to other areas that will help you in the long run to develop that aspect that I'm trying to move you to. Okay, Scott, let's take that call. Did you hear me? Uh, greetings uh, to you, Scotty. Oh, greetings Scotty. to uh, Brother Davis. How you doing? Let's take that call, man. Can I be heard? Yes, I can hear you, Brother. Speak. Oh, okay. Greetings to you, um, Brother Davis, and greetings to Scotty, too. This is Ross. How's everything? All right, Brother Blessed. How are you? Hey, I'm I'm great. Talking to you today is really great. Um. You were talking earlier about cause and effect, and you made me dig up <laughs> dig up a, a text I have here. It's a book called The Sacred Wisdom by um, Dr. Malachi Z. York. Um, he's a great elder, and I used to go to his uh, temple in Brooklyn, and he has a text that's basically about the hermetic principles, um, um, and it expounds even further than, I would say, the Kabbalion from a, a, a african Senate perspective. So he has the, um, the, the doctrine of uh, cause and effect. And I just wanted to read that briefly because I think it kind of applies to what you were talking about with that, even what you just went is talking about, and it even um, talks to what we discussed yesterday about the Hegelian dialectic. So it says here, every cause has its effect. Every effect has its cause. Everything happens according to law. Chance is but a name for law not recognized. There are many planes of causation, but nothing escapes the law. And law is, all things happen in the all. All is affected by things in the all. This principle embodies the fact that there is a cause for every effect and an effect from every cause. It explains that everything happens according to law, that nothing ever merely happens, that there is no such thing as chance or luck, that while there are various planes of cause and effect, the higher dominating the lower planes, still nothing ever entirely escapes the law. The Egyptians overstand the art and methods of rising above the ordinary plane of cause and effect to a certain degree, and by mentally rising to a higher plane, they become causers 
with effects happening within itself. The masses of people are carried along obedient to the environment, the wills and desires of others, stronger than themselves. Heredity, suggestion, and other outward causes moving them about like fish on the hook of life. But the masters, rising to a place above, dominate their moods, characters, qualities, and powers, as well as the environment surrounding them, and become fishers of men instead of fish. They help play the game of life instead of being played and move about by other wills and the environment. They use the principle instead of being its tool. The masters obey the causation of the higher planes, but they help rule on their own planes. In this statement, there is a condensed wealth of Egyptian knowledge, and I agree with him on that. Um, that is just, I think it just really speaks to everything you were just talking about in regards to um, the whole doctrine of cause and effect, and even when we talked about the Hegelian dialectic, and he was saying that people, the masses of people are moved to the wills of other people who are more powerful than them. But when you get to a, a, a level of spirituality where you can get to the higher planes of cause, you can be your own cause with your own effects in the real world. It's all about how high on the plane you're able to ascend to be able to reach that plane of existence where you dominate rather than being dominated in the spiritual sense, which will manifest itself physically. Absolutely, brother. I couldn't have been more precise with it. And you're absolutely right. It's definitely of uh, comedic teachings. And you know what? I said last night that the night show was going to have something to do with last night because it is important yeah, that we understand. Actually. Yeah, it is important that we understand that we do have a certain degree of control, but it can be greater if we operate in trying to educate ourselves so we can expand ourselves. You see, that, that's the yeah. trick of Westernism. That is definitely the trick of Westernism. Thanks a lot, Roz. That's an excellent, excellent point of view. Point in, add to the show, good content, and do feel free to break in at any given time during the course of the show because it's going to get deeper now. And, um, no problem. Thank you, for, brother. I'll mute my line and continue to listen for sure. Thank you. And once again, I'd like to invite those others who are listening to this, whether you have had this knowledge or you've had a... Um, you've come across it in your period of time. Do speak up because people have to understand this what I'm talking about is not this is not brain surgery. We can do this on many levels. And the biggest fear of the Westerners is that they don't know how many levels you just heard Ron say that it elevates us to almost anywhere. And the reason why we say that is because our minds are, do not have an imagination that can expand to the level in which this knowledge can reach. That's why it's so important for us to play a role in our lives. It's so important for us to understand how this works. Okay, now I had spoke to you about the breathing and how slowing your breathing down supplies more oxygen to your system. But here's the here's a side of course to that. When you slow your breathing down, you're controlling the balance. You see, if you could inhale for a long time and you can exhale for a long time, there's a balance being sustained. And see, a lot of you may not have thought about this, but you've heard me talk about the what the bad habits the Westernism teaches us. A person can measure the quality of their lung health by timing the amount of time it takes to inhale and exhale. Because guess what? If you exhale longer than you inhale, then you have a very good signs of healthy lungs. Why? It means because your lungs can hold the air longer and allow you to release it at a position of control to you, but literally expands the time that it took you to inhale. You, so you see, you're really self-examining yourself. And see, here's the power point of all of these things. We've already said that energy is directed by thought. Okay, so you have actually directed the energy into your body to expand your lungs, taking air in. And then after you did that, you controlled the amount of time to inhale and to exhale. So in being in that type of control, you are ready to expand yourself into other areas of personal operation of internal knowledge. 
And this is really why I'm pointing this out to everybody. This is a individual thing. Brother Roz just told you that he was taught at an early age. And as he began to age and connect with it, the clarity of it came to be. If you practice this every day, and listen, I'm going to tell you other areas that you, that you can measure it in. If you practice this every day, keep in mind, when you breathe air in, breathe it through your nose. Keep your mouth shut. And when you exhale, open your mouth until you've developed a point where you don't have to open your mouth. Because, see, when you do that, then you'll find that even when you go to sleep at night, people will wonder if you're awake or asleep because they can't tell. Your body is quiet because you are controlling it. You are not allowing your mouth to open and all of these other things that come into play to be able to cause other problems. Now, what do I mean all these other things that come into play? Food, food, food. Food, 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 food. When you eat, you must eat to nourish the body. Don't eat for taste. Don't eat for flavor. Because you can literally add that once you understand how to eat. You can spice it any way you want to. But food has become a weapon against us. So once again, it's in an area that you have control over. And this is what makes the universal law of oneness so unique. Because now, a lot of the foods that are being made today are not made to nourish the body. Actually, they're made basically because of the greed factor. What is the greed factor? Anything for money. You have to put it in there. Is it going to make it taste better? Yeah, put it in there. But it might hurt them. That's okay. They don't know. Put it in there. This is the time in which we live in. That's why it's important. It's imperative that we take that control back and we start operating in the things that we need to sustain not only a good quality of life, but a life of longevity. And we can do that. So let me move on. As you breathe and go into these areas of energy, the next important element of energy practice in breathing is control and expressing a uh, divination to give quality to your life force. Your life force is going to flow through channels and meridians in the body. There are 14 of which are most important. And energy masters develop knowledge that correlating the body movement to the flow of the energy through specific meridians, an important element of energy is the balancing of the flow of energy through the meridians. Set the motion of complex. Okay, now let me give you an understanding. Say you wanted to reach up on a shelf and grab a book and you were sitting. Your mind, the thought, tells your energy to tap into your para, oh, I can't even think of it, your parathetic, uh, I can't even think of the term, but it's a, it's a tells about the physical body, nervous system. And that energy is going to that area, and what does it you do? You look up at the book. So the energy has already entered your mind set concept of what you want it done. Then it goes to your shoulder. And that energy through your parathetic nervous system begins to add strength to lift up your arm according to your thought process. As you're lifting up your arm, you are reading the titles so your mind is intact with the thought process of achieving the book on the upper shelf. When you see the book, you extend your hand and extend your arm, and the energy is flowing through your shoulder, up your arm, to your hands, and when it gets to your fingers, as you touch the book, it grasps, and it pulls the book down. Are we getting an understanding of our control factor here? Because that is the most important part of this show tonight, to make you realize that you have a control. Don't get caught up in the external world. 
because the external world is going to be out there. They want to lure you out there so that you don't understand how to operate in controlling yourself to develop yourself. Because once you start to develop yourself and controlling yourself, all of a sudden, you can literally send the energy to where your body needs it. See, your body has always operated from the standpoint of oneness. So therefore, when you didn't control it, you might get sick, but the body has a way of healing itself. If you don't want that process, the Westernism says, come to me, I give you a pill. Now that pill may not have any other purpose in your body than to remedy the problem. It will not fix it, but it will remedy the problem. But in remedy the problem, it may be subduing another part of your system so that it will not function in balance. And therefore, although you may not have that initial call for whatever it was, now you have something else. You might have a grogginess. That grogginess may be throwing your equilibrium off. And once your equilibrium is thrown off, there's an imbalance that sets in. You see, it is so important that we take control of our lives and utilize the energy flow in the various meridians and the different rates of vibration which is correlated by thought to the areas in which our body is weak. And we can do these things. I've demonstrated it to you already. And a lot of people are saying, well, I don't know if I can do it. Well, see, if you don't think you can, you won't. But if you operate this as a process of change, you will see the change. And the reason why you will see the change is because it's going to operate in other areas of your life. You see, there are five organ energy systems for success in your body. Now, I know you're probably saying that, or there's more organs in your body. That's true. But there's certain organs that have a certain effect on specific things that you do on a daily basis. Now, these five organs literally um, are the kidney, which is the kidney urinary bladder meridian, the liver and the gallbladder meridian, and these meridians are what flows around them in order to bring the nutrients to them. Remember I said it before? That's the heart and small intestines meridian. To this set also belongs the pericardium and the triple warmer meridian. Now, we'll go into those things later because literally we're trying to develop our thought process. Then you have the lung and large intestines meridian and the spleen and stomach meridian. Now, when you look at those in different parts of your body, you'll see that they are close to chakras. For those people who are into the uh, understanding of chakras, because literally, they supply. And in their supply, they are supplying the nutrients for all of those things in that area. Now, the kidney <laughs> meridian, for example, it governs your ability to work hard and long, to stay focused, to preserve in the face of great obstacles, to persevere in the face of great obstacles, and so on. In addition, it is well knowledge the physiological activity of the kidney and the urinary bladder. The liver meridian governs your ability to intuit the tactics to achieve success for all of them. So now, I know you're saying, well, wait a minute, we have control. No, listen, we do have control. And we have control over the life force. But the life force literally travels through the body on every aspect of our individual growth. So therefore, they travel on the meridians. They travel on blood vessels. You see what I'm saying? And whenever your body is out of balance, when something is out of balance in your body, that is a doorway to illness. And a lot of people want to say, well, I go to the doctor. That's what Westernism wants you to say. But see, if you understand that these meridians control the functions of their associated organs in addition to having functions of their own, that means, once again, Although they are there to operate around those organs, they have their own functions. And those own functions may be the cardium and the triple warmer are referenced to separately. Why? Because the meridians control the functions. They are associated with those organs. And listen, their functions are not limited. 
It is this that gives energy the ability to play a major role in the success of a healthy system. Now, that is powerful. Because now you're literally controlling the energy. So what you haven't learned to do is elevate yourself so that you can control it flowing through your body. You see, all medicines are not good medicine. So you must organize your information regards of all aspects of man's being. So what do you do when I say that? I mean, you must organize your thought process and the information regarding all aspects of man's being, the physical, the mental, the emotional, and the spiritual. Though it and we can diagnose problems, set therapeutic and growth programs, and monitor the progress for all aspects of life, mental, physical, and spiritual. We can do that. Remember, the energy follows the mind. And you see, a lot of people, I have to be very careful here, because a lot of people fail to realize the effect that emotion, emotion has on the mind. It is so important that we understand what is meant by controlling your emotion. Listen, this is Brother Davis. We're coming up on the end of the first hour, and it's been hopefully very informative, because literally I'm going to take you other places they're still going to focus on the same aspect of how you can control but only I'm going to elevate you into a point of how you can take control you see it just doesn't happen you have to do something to develop, develop yourself so that when you do take control you're making the decisions that are best suited for one who's in a position to control your body functions as well as your operation of your body this is Brother Davis on a wise Wednesday I want to Reiterate to please contact Black Talk Radio and make a donation where and when you can because this is brought to you by Black Talk Radio. No other stations are bringing you this type of knowledge. If you enjoy it, show it because we definitely need it. This is Brother Davis on a Wise Wednesday and we'll be right back. Radio, your choice for digital black radio, new black media for the new millennium. Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. Now, I, I really, I really want to put some time in you understanding this. And so, literally, I'm gonna have to break this concept down in several shows. But before the end of this show, I'm going to show you how you can literally move this in. To meditation. Meditation is the foundation of being able to elevate yourself so which you can be able to tap into how to control and as well as how to change you to be what you want to be. The kidney energy organ system is the foundation of all the functions of the body and the mind. It is the source of vitality for other organ systems. A deficiency or an access in this function of the system will cause similar problems in all of the other areas of 
the system, especially the energy areas of the system. Although the spleen and stomach system is in charge of the production of blood and energy, the kidney system determines the level of activity. If the kidney system is deficient, so will be the spleen and stomach production of energy and blood. From here on, the system will be referred to simply as the kidney, with the understanding that more than one organ is meant. And the reason why we're trying to make a shortcut here is so that people will understand that your body is a unit that is connected to the oneness of the universe. And the greater control you have over the body, the greater you can step in to the magnificence of the universe. You see, when I spoke about giving you the key so you can go through the door, and then I said about all of the windows in there that you have access to, that's what Brother Ross was talking about. You see, we have so much we can achieve when we operate for us, and we do what was best for us. But don't look at it for us. Start with you. All successful systems post-sit the will is paramount in the achievement of man's goals. We must all have something that they call willpower. And let me repeat that. We must all have something that's called willpower. Yet none give workable instructions on how to achieve it. The will, which is nothing more than a thought that indicates the potential to be realized is carried out by an energy that courses through the channels that begin at the sole of the feet and rise up the leg on to the front body up against up and just below the collarbone. A so called weak will is in reality a deficiency of life force. Are y'all getting how these things are all connected. How literally where we are in our thought process comes because of the programming you're watching on that TV set. And listen, TV isn't the only thing that you're being programmed by. You're being programmed by radios and everything. When you hear that they're uh, degrading uh, music on the radio and they're calling our women names and they're, they're talking about them in manners that is unseemly, and you're listening to this on a regular basis, you literally are being Degraded. What do I mean by that? I mean your life force is being bombarded on a daily basis with negativity. So you are literally, regardless of what you think is going on, these sounds and vibrations are taking effect on your body because it is connected to the oneness of the whole. So when you look and say, why are these children out here today so radical look at the music that they're listening to look at the system of education that you have them in that is dumbing them down you answer your own questions we can change that but we must start with us so that the example can be saw and when the example is seen we can operate on other people because see this is what this is this is an operation to give you the knowledge to apply in your daily life to change to who you want to be. And we can take everything back. We can take our food supply back. We can take our self-governing back. We could separate ourselves with power, meaning putting ourselves in a position of economic control so that literally we can be able to say no. And see, in America, a lot of people fail to realize that is not far away. Because the numbers are showing that. We believe that Donald Trump was elected by the most numbers of votes? No, he wasn't. He was elected by corruption. Why corruption? Because they have to do whatever they can. These people are desperate. And the only ones who are desperate are the ones that don't see humanity as human. They see humanity as race. That was a caveat on the side. Little side party. And I didn't mean to rant, but sometimes it just overwhelms me when I see our brothers and sisters out here and they, they're walking down the streets and they're bobbing their heads and their pants is hanging down below their butts and then they talk about reputation. Oh, I got a rep. Well, I want to, I want to, you got to respect me. You got a job. You don't have no self respect. I tell you what, follow me. You follow me. I'm not following you. You follow me. 
And believe me, before too long, you'll start changing the way you talk. You know why? Because you're going to want people to understand what you say. And then when you change the way you talk, you're going to find yourself doing things you never thought you would do. What is that? You're going to be able to learn to settle your mind. And when you settle your mind, then you can think clearly. You see, that's what's so important about the next lesson. Remember, I already taught you how to breathe, the embryonic breathing. Oh, yeah, very good tool. But now, when you go into a state of meditation, when you want to meditate, even if you don't think you're going to meditate, you will. You know why? Because sometimes meditation takes place in a, what they call a solemn heart. A solemn heart, you might be just sitting back thinking, well, I'm getting me to relax here a little bit. Got me some downtime. And you're practicing your breathing. And all of a sudden, you don't have any thoughts in your mind. Why don't you have any thoughts in your mind? Because you're focusing on relaxing. You've just entered the first stage of meditation and don't even realize it. You see, I know what I'm trying to do with you. But I can't make you practice. You see, because he practice is what opens the door to application. And when you open the door to application, all of a sudden practice becomes a part of your daily life. And believe me, there's nothing like it. The reason why there's nothing like it is because now you begin to expose yourself to things that you would never have been exposed to before. You expose yourself to a thought process that takes place in a trance state that may come right out of your own history and not realize it because guess what? You've given someone in your ancestral line the ability to drop something in you without you knowing that they're doing it. And before you know it, you wake up, you know what? Man, I feel good today. I feel like I can go out here and do something that's constructive. You see, we have to understand that Every problem in the black community isn't no one person's problem. When I started writing this, putting this together, I wasn't putting it together for me. I was putting it together for the people I love because there is a place we need to move to in order to take control. And it may be very expensive getting there. So if I equipped you a front and I give you the tools and you operate in these tools and you begin to grow and all of a sudden when you hear this show you call in and say you know what Brother Davis this is what I did and this is what happened and guess what I found out because all of this here is called when, where, and how you got that? when, where, and now when you woke up where was you at when you woke up and how did you wake up? all of these things play a role and they come back repetitiously in your life my brothers and sisters we are on the door front of change whether you can see it or not we have a lot of things that are, are in, in our, on our line of sight what I mean about our line of sight they're obstacles in order for us to try to get to where we're going and a lot of people are going to fight for their obstacle because that obstacle gives them pleasure or comfort in a place that is unnatural to them and this is, we're living, listen clearly, we're living unnatural lives because we don't know what it is to be a natural black man in a land of black people. How, what is their culture like? You see, their culture was elevated because they focused on the things that allowed them to add to the world, not take from it. And this is what we're doing. We're focusing on us so that we can bring ourselves to together and add to the world. Of course, there's going to be a certain degree of cost to that because guess what? The others, look at their history. Need I say more? Let's move on. <clears throat> the kidneys and short-term memory and success in general are played in a manner in which you must be unable to identify the weakness of the kidneys. The cause, in most cases, is fearfulness, which is a main source of failure. Now, does that affect many? It is an emotional foundation of which dealt, which destroys the power of the mind and can take over the matter. 
or for one person's ability to embark on an undertaking, let alone alone preserve in the face of a strong obstacle. To be able to, I'm sorry, to persevere, to be able to persevere in the face of a major obstacle. We got obstacles in front of us every day. Literally, look at look at look for for those people who go to work every day. How many times do you look up and see somebody there and just shake your head? Oh, no, no. That's an obstacle. But when you begin to operate and control, literally, those obstacles disappear. Why do they disappear? Because they no longer have that effect on you. Because you're working on the inside and coming out, the outside don't have the effect on you that it used to have. It is our responsibility. That's why I'm focusing so much on what we can do and how the body and the mind and the energy force can literally be operating for us in front of any kind of, of, any kind of spectrum and nobody even know it but you. I do it all the time. How many times you be someplace and you put that smile on your face and you know you don't want to be there. You don't want to be there at all. But that smile's on your face and your mind's a million miles away. And you're thinking, now, when I get out of here, go home to my wife, sit down with her, check out, see what her day was like, curl upstairs, maybe take me a shower, grab a good book. Well, I might go out to dinner with her. I don't know. You see, your mind ain't on what, what's going on in front of you because that is external. It is important that we work on the internal so that we can literally eliminate our weaknesses. We can throw our shortcomings out. We can find the like-minded people, and we can talk to our organs. <laughs> we can talk to our organs. Do you understand what I'm saying? By now, it should be very clear that you and the fearlessness, the workaholic habits and, hab and ambitions, the determination, the perseverance, and nothing more than indignation of any state of health of the kidney. That means that regardless of whatever you're doing, it will not affect the state of health of your kidney because you're in control of that. And they are organ talk. You understand what I just said? I'm a very hardworking man, and I am my own boss. So that from time to time, I fall into a zone where I don't feel like doing anything, not even my energy exercises to get my energy up and going. This is a mind talking. Period. But some days you just don't feel like it. So you, you have a right. If you're doing what you're supposed to be doing to develop yourself, you have a right to say, you know what, I think I'm going to take a break today. It's not every day. That break may not be for the whole day because I'm going to tell you the fruit becomes so good that when you feel that way at a specific part of the day, another part of that same day you might say, well, look, I'm going to go ahead and knock this out. You know why? Because you're blessed by the fruit and how you are investing your time. Your kidneys, just like everything else, has a positive and a negative. There's a positive pole, and the kidneys must be charged with nutrients. And this function of charging the kidneys with nutrients can be overwhelmed by providing any efficient amount of nutrients. And see, if that's what the food is today, remember I told you about the food? These are all interconnected. When I say the law of oneness, I want you to understand these things are all interconnected. The kidney energy system you should be able to see the interdependence related between the two, the positive and the negative. Nutrients is the function and therefore requires a functional agent to enable it. And the functional agent required to be the nutrient, the nature, in order for it to function. So it must have nutrients for the nature of the organ to function. This is important for you to know so that you will be you will always keep both needs in mind. The therapeutic prescription many prisoners make a mistake of strengthening the kidneys for sexual potency. Now, let me give you understanding that. You see when you throw this Viagra and stuff out here, literally that's what they're doing. They're putting a synthetic chemical in you to make your body think 
it can do something that it's not designed for. And what you're doing is you're exhausting another area of your body. So without considering the kidney dependency on the, 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 the positive and the negative, with the results that they create an imbalance. And what I told you, it is up to you to be able to sustain a balance. So now, we know that energy flows according to thought. We know that will is what thought operates from. Achieving what you will or not depends on how strong you are in the building process of what you're trying to achieve. Now, the reason why I'm trying to put these out to you now is because these are key to the mind over matter. You see, there's always an obstacle that says you, you can when you know what you want to do. Because I could say to you, I, I just go ahead and do it. But you may see obstacles in doing it. See, that's why we have to have this time. Because somebody may call and say, you know what, brother, I had that same situation, but here's what I did. Okay. They might say, you know, I, I got some uh, sea moss, and I, I got together and I made a, an elixir with some uh, golden seal, and I added a little bit of, um, uh, let's say it's peppermint. And this elixir strengthened me because the golden seal literally added the vitality to my kidney. And then the uh, the uh, peppermint, it strengthened my okay, uh, my blood, uh, uh, took it, it thinned my blood out just enough so that it gave me a balance in my system so that I could function at peak capacity so achieving what I wanted to do was not beyond me foreseeing and see everybody has to understand this whenever there's an obstacle in front of you look at that obstacle like you can't get around it in the beginning but then when you start focusing on yourself and what you're trying to achieve you can find a solution to getting around that obstacle you wouldn't be the first and it's not beyond your control that's why there's so much going on right now. When I say that, I mean this so-called racist activity out here. They know the numbers speak for themselves. They opened up America, and then they tried to close it like a cloud. You can't. So these numbers are changing all the time, and they're scared. And then there are people like us who are waking up, and we are starting to operate and use some of the ancient principles of the universe in order for us to build ourselves beyond our circumstances. We have taken mind over manner to a new level. And we understand that water is the elixir of life. All of these are key principles for us to be able to get to the next level. What is the next level? The next level is being able to meditate on the level to bring what you see in meditation and in your subconscious into your conscious. And that, see, that's what I was telling you about that breathing. That breathing technique, you practice that breathing technique. And if you don't do anything to detour the re operations of your, your lung and respiratory system, i.e. smoke or that sort of thing, you're going to see it manifest itself. My wife, she says, <laughs> you should tell you on the show that sometimes my breathing is so well controlled when I sleep, it scares her because I don't make noise. Okay? Now, understand, the more you focus on trying to achieve the goal, the better you'll get, the more uh, side effects that will add to your life. When I say add to your life, it's like, like that particular side effect there, where she ordinarily thought nothing about me sleeping or snoring or anything. But she noticed when I didn't. So you see it in the, di the dynamic here. And I want you to understand, this is in everyone's life. I am no exception. What makes us powerful is when we open up the door and operate in our line of power. And our line of power is operating for us at all times. We must take control. And that's all this is about. This is about taking control in our lives in order to produce the quality of life we want. And you see, the quality of life I want does not leave out my people. Because, remember, we're studying the universal law, the divine oneness. So what I achieve, I have to expect a certain expectation of myself to be able to share that. And who am I sharing it with? The people I love. 
I'm actually trying to put it in a situation that my family can maintain what I'm trying to do when my time is up, which I don't expect for 100 years. But then again, like I said before, I'm looking at myself being able to be the pillar so that I can help be the example for those coming up so that they can be the right examples for those that follow them. And see, that's what you're doing. When you start operating this, and these are not things that are hard to do. But when you start operating in them, the people watching you are going to see the change. And you know what they're going to say? I don't know what you're doing, man, but you you really look good. I mean, I, you, I don't know. You tell us, what do you do? What do, you, do you exercise every day? I have had people I went to school with, classmates, who literally walked up to me and said, we did go to school together, didn't we? I said, yeah, yeah, we did. Well, you class, did you graduate in class or two? Yes, I did. And they just look at me. You know why? Because the decisions we made in life are different. And this is what I'm telling you. That you can start making the decisions now that are going to be so transformable that people really won't know you because guess what? They haven't seen people like you. And you're, we're out here. It's not just me. You take your time, and you know somebody who's operating on a level of life that only helps produce strong-willed people. They don't even all have to be like-minded because everybody gets a revelation. There are a lot of things working with us. There are a lot of strong people that haven't even exposed themselves. They may be in cognito, so to speak. When I say cognito, they may be uh, they may be Greeks, they may be of some religion or something that just hasn't opened the door for them to grow beyond it, and most people do. And when they do, then guess what? There are like-minded people out here who's willing to say, okay, well, let's, let's talk. Because guess what? There's something that I'm doing or something that you're doing that we can do something together. And see, that's what it's all about. That's exactly what it's all about. That's what this love is about. Now, I'm only taking you tonight to the kidney. To the kidney. Now, I've given you enough information, just getting you to this point, to allow you to breathe in a new way, because I remember what I said, from the moment you're born, you lose. You lose your ability to embryonic breathe. But now you know what embryonic breathing is? Practice it. And when you practice it, you'll be de developing a part of yourself that you really didn't realize was so intricate to the next level of life. Why is that? Because as you practice it, you're going to realize that you can meditate. And all of a sudden now, as you begin to go into stages of meditation, you're going to start finding out that you don't have to think. What do I mean? Clear all the thoughts out of your mind. Those are the burdens that, that, you, that literally are weighing you down. Then when you get a clear mind, then you can open your door for your ancestors to put in fresh stuff, new stuff. It might just be a new way that you can operate. It might tell you something. Yeah, but you got to start stretching in the morning. You didn't want to the meditation. I got this here. Sally kept saying, you got to start stretching. You start stretching in the morning, you realize, you know what? You're opening up meridians on another level. Yes, you're allowing your uh, blood vessels to expand and contract at the will of your thought process, giving your energy more room to move through your system at a greater speed of, or a level of vibration. Remember, energy is like water. So therefore, it's going to flow all through your body. And when you can get to a point, when you feel it, because that's coming, <laughs> That is coming. You can literally feel energy flowing through your body to the areas that you need it because your mind is putting it there. We are unique in many ways, but we must celebrate that in times like these or when we can. Now, this last half hour we're coming into, I want you to pick up your phones. Give me your impression of tonight's show or Give me your impression if you've ever experienced anything like what I've discussed to you tonight. Why? Because you become part of another person's testimony. Some people think they can't do this. Really? They think they cannot do it. 
let me give you an understanding real quick before we go to the break. A lot of times we look at money in the way that uh, the people we emulate money. You see, we emulate people so that we can fit in. And their perception of money may not really be our perception. But if they have a great value for it, that great value transcends. But they're allowing that value to be able to control to a certain degree. So each one of us has a right to judge that. So when it comes right to your ability to control, now you are already in a psychological lurch because now you're asking yourself, what will you do for what, where that may not be their problem? You see how they transcended that on you? And the reason being is because they know they have the resources to get the money they need, okay? Because they see it as a tool. We don't see it as a, as a tool. We're taught to see it as, you know, you need this for that, you need this bill paid, you need that, or we see it differently. That's why we are changing the dynamic psychologically and mentally so that we can be able to take control back. This is Brother Davis on the Wise Wednesday. We're coming up on the last half hour, y'all. It ain't going to be a whole half hour. It's only probably going to be 15 or 20 minutes. But I do want you to call in because I've given you a lot of information tonight, and I want you to understand this most of all. If you do nothing, nothing happens. But if you do something, hold on to your hat because you will transform yourself in a mirror. And I tell people, if you're not looking in a mirror on a regular basis, it's something you don't like. I look in the mirror on a regular basis for two reasons. One, I want to see my change. And two, I want to be prepared. So when you see me, whether you see my picture, you're going to have some idea or perspective about me. And in most cases, I ain't got to worry about it being negative. This is Brother Davis on the Wise Wednesday. I want to give you another shout-out in reference to Black Talk Radio. There's a lot of things that the body needs in order to be healthy and balanced. And one of those things is Black Talk Radio. Why? Because you're getting information here. You're not going to get from mainstream radio. They're not going to talk about the universal laws. They're not going to talk about how you can take and apply simple, basic things to your life to make you better than who you are now, to make you see yourself on a greater level and have the ability to reach it. No. You're not going to get that anywhere else. This is what you call food for the heart, mind, soul, and body. Because guess what? When you start to elevate, there ain't no stopping. Where you can go, I don't know, but there ain't no stopping. But it's on you. It's, I, when it was on me, it took me a couple. It took me a while to identify. You know what? I don't know if I can do this. Or I went through that whole thing. But when I started applying this, and I was like, wow. You know, after this, for a period of time, and that happened. Wow, that's deep. Try doing sit-ups. You do five a day, next week you'll be doing ten. This is Brother Davis on the Wise Wednesday. I'll be right back. Radio since 2008, providing new black media for the masses. Welcome back, welcome back, welcome. Is there any calls in queue, Scotty? Okay, well, look, I'm going to give you some key things right now. There are, there are eight key words for everything. For a beginner who's is there someone in queue? Yes, yes. Okay, well, yeah, yes, add to the show. 
Brother Davis, can you hear me? Yes, I can now. Much clearer. Give, give, give me all your right, name. All right. Where are you calling from? My name is Russell. Uh, I'm, I'm traveling the road much like you and your wife do. I'm in Georgia. Excellent. Yes, Excellent. Um, well, to the show, brother. Hey, man. Greetings to you and your wife. I appreciate y'all, man. I got a question and a comment. Um, the question is, when you were talking about the meridians and how they relate to different um, organs in your body, I got a, a loved one that's missing specifically that gallbladder been removed. So as far as an example, like gallbladder or kidney or something that you don't have, is there a way to balance yourself out even though you're short on that, that organ? Yeah, absolutely there is, brother. Now let me first say, okay. uh, uh, regardless of what you're doing, the function that that gallbladder plays is going to be eliminated so that you have what's called an immediate imbalance. But a lot of times, what you have to with your whatever medications that they have you on or whatever, you gotta find through holistic means of being able to balance that in a natural way. Why? Because eventually the body becomes tolerant to the synthetic, and it begins to fail. That's what just a part of why they prefer to give you medicine rather than to cure you. So literally, now could I say exactly what to do? Not in the moment that I'm here, but I tell you what, my email my email is blessedrdavis at aol dot com. Shoot me a note, and I'm gonna do some due diligence on this myself. So at least I could least help you have in reference to what foods may be good for that circumstance. I do know that meditation is good for that circumstance because literally you can slow or speed your body. The whole thing about that is that putting in the time so that you can reach a point which you're comfortable and have your peace. But believe me, brother, shoot me a text. I'll do my due diligence on this, and I'll get back to you on what I find out. And I'll inquire with a few other people that I know will have dealt with this here on some level my, themselves because they're holistic um, practitioners. So um, I don't want to mislead you. I do know that okay. med meditation is one of the tools. But you shoot me an email with your uh, information on it. Tell me about you called the show. Tell me the topic that you talk about. And uh, I'll definitely get back to you before the weekend in reference to what I've been told would be useful for you to do. Okay, that's great. Bless our Davis at AOL.com. Okay. Absolutely. Hey, All right. and, uh, yes. I, had a, I had a comment for you. Um been some years ago, but um, working off a limited basis of knowledge, and it's actually some martial arts training, some really basic stuff. Um, as a younger person, I spent a lot of time by myself, and I, I kind of got into it off of that basis. And I started mm -hmm. um, started trying to meditate, and I, I really didn't have any books or anything. But um, I, I actually got to a point um, with, with the physical training, feeling like I didn't have hardly any limitations and then it's just uh, I could feel the energy bouncing out in my body you know and I liked it and then I got to an experience of um, out of body you know absolutely and, uh, I, I, I've i been trying to get back to that but I guess maybe I wasn't even eating right then and I'm not really eating right now but I um, I just haven't been able to get back to it you know not yet but I, sure, I, I know I know it's possible. Okay, let me ask you this here. Are you over the road or are you home on a regular basis? I'm over the road. Okay. How often do you get home? Um, well, I'm I'm owner operator so I can go home when I want to, but usually every week, ten days. Okay, listen. What we do is we hit the grocery stores. They have what's called pre packaged brown rice. All you gotta do is warm it up. And what we did was we got, you, you know what a lunchbox oven is. <laughs> we got it in a lunchbox oh, yeah. oven. We warmed up the brown rice. Uh, key was good. I always ate a lot of fresh greens. Whatever the greens were in season, you can go right in the grocery store, and you got to buy for at least two days at a time. Three if you have some place to keep them. But that way, you don't want to have to stop at fast foods. You want to throw something together real quick. you got a right here to do. Uh, there's also the key where they comes in by... Um, Uncle Ben's makes a kiwa that uh, literally is a much better food to eat as filler because you can literally make that taste and put the, 
whatever seasonings on it that you like. Okay. Now, listen, cut back on your meats. The reason why I'm telling you to cut back on your meats is because meats has a lot of stuff in them that you really can't see. Chemicals and uh, unless you know the, the farmer that's, that's growing and he's telling you it's grass-fed, it's an entirely different scenario. But if you don't, you cut back on them. Go when you get home, you have time to do your own due diligence and you want to that's your that's your choice. But as a man that's reached the age of comfort, believe me, when I cut out meats, I, I, I could tell within two weeks why. Because my system didn't feel so strangled. I didn't have that kind of that weight on me that I used to have because I like to taste meat, but I just didn't know what it was doing to me. So right. those are some quick mm-hmm. tips. And, and always keep, keep a case of water. Keep water, water, water. Drink as much water as you can. Remember I just said it's the elixir of life. A lot of times when you get hungry, you could drink water, and that will take your appetite away. Yeah, so I travel with my own water. Excellent, bro. Uh, Glad to hear that. Thank, and, uh, thank you. I'll be in touch. Appreciate that. Now, I uh, appreciate the call, brother. You be safe out there, and that definitely hooked me up. Okay, that thank was a perfect you. opportunity for you guys to see that regardless of what you do where you are, there's just a solution that you can operate in and make change in your life. Uh, I want to point out a few things. First of all, for those of you who are going to uh, really get serious about breathing, you have to learn that normal breathing isn't normal, okay? It's something that you have done by habit, but it isn't normal, okay? There are eight key words in breathing, which as a beginner of energy focuser, you should remember during normal breathing exercises. One is you must understand that in order to sustain a short time, for a short period of time, you need to reach where your energy goals are set. And these eight words will help you. Calm and silence. Calm and silence. The mind is calm and the breathing is silent. When the mind is calm and at peace, you will be able to judge what's going on correctly and you will be able to regulate your breathing more effectively. Unless you are engaged in a special training or some specific purpose, which the brother just said he used to study martial arts earlier, but that's why he opened the door into meditation. Keep your breathing silent so that you can relax and be at peace. The second word is slender. When you breathe, it is like a thin stream, a tiny stream. It should be smooth, natural, and slender. The key is will lead you into a deeper level of meditation and relaxation. Third word is deep. When you breathe deeply, draw the air down into your abdomen. Draw the air in by moving your diaphragm down rather than by expanding your chest. Only expand your chest if you are doing a chest expansion exercise. Deep breathing will lead you to an abdomen breathing and build a foundation for your energy focus. Remember this, that you can conduct an easily experiment inhaling deeply so that your lungs are completely full and time how long you can do and hold your breath will depend on you. Then try inhaling only 70% of your lung capacity and see how long you can hold that you will find that the latter method you can last much longer because you are, your lungs have reached full capacity. I'm giving you these tools because literally now where you are ready, you have all of the means right now to be able to change your life. You have a basic understanding of breathing. Although I did, there's many levels of breathing. I didn't take you into I just gave you a basic understanding of breathing. Okay, you have a basic understanding of relaxing, and realize you want the, reason, the reason why you need a basic understanding of relaxing is because you got to know what you're trying to achieve. Okay, and then as you go into that this stage of relaxing, you got to understand that you want to be consistent. Consistency, consistency, consistency. Last but not least. Regulate the emotional mind. See, the emotions will bring thoughts in and out your mind. They'll disturb your meditation process. See, the first step, the first stop the thoughts. When a thought is not stopped, 
in vain. That means that when you first practice, the most difficult training is to stop thinking. The final goal of your mind is to be a thought of no thought. You understand that? The final training of your mind should be a thought of no thought. Because when you have reached a stage where your thought is not a thought, you are open to peace. When you're open to peace, your body relaxes. You know how you get the tense knees and your, your blood vessels kind of tense or your legs might be in a position that may be a little awkward to you because of the position that you're sitting in? All of that tension goes away. And it goes away so mildly that you may not even notice it. Because remember, the higher you elevate, the deeper in the meditation you go. The deeper in the meditation you go, the more open you are to be communicated with. You heard the brother talk about out-of-body experiences. Well, you'll have all of that. But what is unique about it is that you will not lose your will. You see, when you go into a dream state, you lose your will. You ever had that concept feeling that you're falling and there's nothing you can do? Well, that doesn't happen in meditation because literally your will is still functional. That is the power that we're moving you to because now you have entered the door and you can see all of the windows and you can go to any window you want or a window may be open to you. This is Brother Davis coming at you on a wise one. This is the last shout out for anybody who want to call in, ask a question or give a personal experience because we're coming up on the end of this hour and I'm 10 of uh, 8 I'm going to close the show but I do want you to understand this I cannot give you any greater form of love than give you the tools I use and these tools may be a greater you may be a greater craftsman than I with these tools now what does that mean that means that you may be more articulous See, I also I make jewelry, I make silver jewelry, you heard my wife mention it. And sometimes the pieces are so unique that I can't rush in the creative process. And I have to maybe add another two or three strokes or another five or ten minutes or maybe buff it for another five minutes longer to get these are the things that a craftsman does when they're putting their product together. You are the product of your mind. Put yourself together. Give yourself a greater value. And most of all, then give it to your people. Because they need it. They need that example. They need to see what they could be and greater. But until they understand, until they see it, it's going to be hard to get to a lot of us. A lot of us are blind. A lot of us, we're dead to our bodies. What does that mean? That means that we don't even consider operating them. We expect of them. We run to the Western system to tranquilize them when we feel that they're not balanced. Think about that for a while. I'll tell you something. These wise Wednesdays have really, really made me grow. I mean, really, that made me grow because it makes me get deeper into understanding the capacity of one has to be diligent about what they're trying to do. Uh, you know, I, I listen to other people in the past that they have followed in order to become who they are. And everyone has a unique story. And the best part about it is that they all add to the whole. They all add this to the oneness. But here's the best part. I don't have to be them to enjoy their experience when they expose it to me. Because they love me enough to expose it to me. This is Brother Davis, and I'm loving you as much as I can. 
do keep in mind, Black Talk Radio is bringing Candle Radio to you. They're bringing to you a unique knowledge that is available for those who seek it. But for those who don't, so be it. Just remember that those who seek it must understand the importance of saying nothing. They must say nothing to those people who do not see the importance until they approach them. Because when they approach them, then they're ready to seek. They may not be able to get it the way I give it, but give it to the best you can. That's all we can ask. You can't show me any greater love. I'm going to tell you straight up. Because I'm going to tell you something. There's nothing more important to me. And I, I see what my people have gone through, but I know what they're coming to. I don't want you to think for one minute that I put these lessons together because I don't want you to expand yourself. I don't want you to grow beyond the circumstances. I don't want to one day see your children achieving some of the magnificence that some children are achieving in the system the way it is. We can make this better. Our children demand it. Our ancestors cry out for it. And it is our responsibility. Whether you want to take your role or not is not my decision. I have served a greater purpose in making sure that the things I do will help meet you along the path if you're building too. This is Brother Davis on a Wise Wednesday, and I do hope that the show is a service to you tonight. Once again, I want to shout out to all of those who called in. I appreciate your calls. and I'm also shouting out to all those who listened diligently enough to just practice some of the tools I gave you, some of the exercises I gave you. And then you'll see for yourself that you're transforming to be what you want to be and not accepting the circumstances that are laid upon you. I know Brother Dave is busy tonight. and He's not going to be here to close the show out. So let me say this real quick for all of those of you who do not know. The universal laws are available. You just have to go and do some uh, due diligence. And there's a number of books out there that speak about how we can operate in the universal laws. I was trying to find my personal book, but unfortunately I couldn't find it. Because I got, I've, been, I've been reading so much today. But uh, ultimately there's a number of different packages. Well, should I say books, not packages. But uh, <clears throat> the master's. The master plan is one that I can think of all off the top of my head. Uh, there's a number of different books by uh, uh, Ron on the far that's also good about understanding the universal plan. And uh, there's another Mr. I can't think of his name offhand who has a book out, an excellent book that deals with the universal law. But nonetheless, do your own due diligence. And when you find something that you captivated to you, share it with other people. Because guess what? You might have what I need, and I just don't know until you expose it to me. This is Brother Davis on a Wise Wednesday. Uh, Brother Scotty, back to yes. you. Yes, sir. Thank you, Brother Davis. All right, we're going to get ready to close out. At the top of the hour, we got New Abolitionist Radio coming up. That's 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern Time. And then at 10 o'clock p.m. Eastern Time will be Mind, Body, and Spirit Radio. Uh, we're going to go ahead and close it out with Brother Braggs. Brother Braggs, you there? Can you chime us out, please? Uh, yes, sir, I'm here. Peace, peace. Peace. Dinar would have had serious consequences for the world financial system, but may also have empowered the people of Africa, something black activists say the U.S. wants to avoid at all costs. We slicing cake. We slicing cake. We slicing cake. Say the U.S. wants to avoid at all costs. We're slicing cake. Say the U.S. wants to avoid at all costs. We're slicing Gaddafi didn't give up in the months leading.
leading up to the military intervention, he called on African and Muslim nations to join together to create this new currency that would rival the dollar and euro. They would sell oil and other resources around the world only for gold dinars. It's an idea that would shift the economic balance of the world. Countries' wealth would depend on how much gold they have, not how many dollars they trade. And Libya has 144 tons of gold.